Hi, I'm Lee Shans, team member for Big Woods Box. I'm here with my buddy Chris Dalty, and we're gonna talk about my main moose hunt that took me 40 years to draw my own tag. I've been guiding moose hunters for 20 years, and I've shot a couple of moose on other people's permits as a sub permittee, but yeah, 40 years to get a permit. You're 40 years old? 55. Come on. I was a 14 year old <laughs> kid, I remember it because it was 1980 was the first year that they brought the moose hunt back. They hadn't had the moose hunt for 45 years. They closed it in 35, and then 45 years later, they started it in 1980, and my dad got a permit. And uh, I was a 14-year-old kid, and I thought, boy, I'll probably get a permit next year. Nope, <laughs> nope. Took me exactly 40 years. I drew it in 2020. And that you're a resident. A long time. And I'm a resident. Because you have a lot better odds as a resident. Yeah, and I've got a lot of bonus a points. A lot of but bonus points. It just, yeah, it, it took a long time. But anyways, we had a heck of a chance last year. A hell of a, hell of a week. Yeah, I think uh, probably what everybody would like to know is uh, what my feelings were, you know, taking, having 40 years before I got drawn for my own permit. And I had kind of mixed feelings about it. The moose hunt's been really good for me. Uh, I have four children and my wife was a stay-at-home mom. She, she always wanted to be a homemaker and raise the four kids and... God bless her, she, she homeschooled my four kids too, so she had a lot of work at home. So uh, I ended up, started the guide business 20 years ago, and I've guided over the years, I don't know, way over 100, maybe, I don't know, way over 100 moose hunters in the last 20 years. And we've shot a lot of really nice bulls, but, you know, it, it really, I wanted to get my own permit and shoot my own bull, and I really wanted to be selective you know i didn't want to just shoot a an average bull i wanted to shoot something really nice we had a hard week uh monday and tuesday was really warm and windy and anybody that knows about the september moose hunt that's when they're they're rutting pretty good in that september hunt chasing the cows around and uh, the thing that can mess you up is the heat and the wind and we had it monday and tuesday were rough we never saw a bull i don't think until wednesday and then Wednesday, it was uh, raining pretty good. And I'm trying to think back now. My son uh, was guiding a guy, and he shot a, a nice bull that made the main antler and skull club. And I think that was Wednesday night in the pouring rain. But yeah. I remember we, we got rained on pretty hard, and yeah. on that was on Wednesday. He just nurse his coffee for a minute. Get some caffeine time. time. It does look like it's overcast this morning, so no that, that'll help keep it a little cool. Ah! 
just we'll make a loop back around towards the road and keep going. Already, it's only 8:41 in the morning, Monday morning. That's cool. We'll have them in camp sooner than later. That's good stuff. Looks like he is. Yeah, he's here. He is? Where's his vehicle? Well, right we got supper all ready. <laughs> Dessert ready. Pretty, got everything done for you guys. Pretty freaking lousy moose weather, ain't it? A couple hundred yards. He keeps walking and I grunted and he can't even hear it because of the wind. 
gets up about a hundred yards almost in line with us I give a little cow call there he starts licking his chops <laughs> turns and starts coming walked right up 30 yards from us and stood there a good one nice one 40 inches but yeah six seven points on oh, yeah. the side you know nice yeah it was pretty cool the hell out of there I said they're not going nowhere because it's too warm All right you know it was warm since last week there was at least four or five we do what do you think yeah Made it. How you doing, buddy? How's it going? Good. See you. Barney. Hey, my buddy. <laughs> How are you? Good, you? Oh, I'm awesome. It's so great to see you. Yeah, you too. Did you bring the oh, California you weather with you? Uh, I, I may have. Yeah. We saw a ball. Oh, good. On, like, in like the first 90, uh, at like 7.30 on Monday, yesterday morning. But he was yeah. young. He's like two year old. Oh, yeah. You don't want that. And then we just heard, we were just grunting with uh, a bull and a cow. I had a cow talking back to me there and there was then there was a bull grunt with her and then she took him yeah they're on the other side of a flowage that we were yeah so this uh, is uh ben allen hey Hi, Billy. nice to meet you, so, nice to meet you ben that's nice yeah, then they, they have the uh oh and then look at the handle they did uh uh 700 yeah so they just made a it's got an edge on it yeah. We're going to use that on your bowl. Done and done. All right. Thank you. 62 or 17 C. Tomorrow rain, windy, with highs around 70 to 21 C. Wind gusts tomorrow afternoon up to 40 miles per hour. On Thursday, we had a great day on Thursday. I remember in the morning we were walking down a road. and uh, New place. Yeah, new place we hadn't been to. I started making cow calls, and all of a sudden it sounded like there was a pack of wolves around us. Yeah, they weren't, cool. they were coyotes. But it was like breaking daylight, too. Boy, we had probably, I don't know how many coyotes were there, but a bunch on both sides of the road. And then I actually called a coyote in. One came running up the road at us, and... We he found was lucky a, you didn't give him one. Yeah. We didn't know how many moose yeah, were we didn't know how That's many the only reason why we didn't give him one. And we ended up, we didn't <laughs> go that much further. We went maybe another half a mile down that road. And uh, 
we found a, a big piss pit right beside the road in a ditch. Mm -hmm. And then there was a trail going up a steep mountain. And it looked like that moose was coming down off the mountain right beside the road. It was good enough. It wasn't a main road, but it was a road you could drive a vehicle on. And uh, he was coming down and checking that pit and then going back up. There was a beaten path there. So we did some mountain climbing. Yeah, that would we, have been ex an experience. We walked past that, remember? We walked past that for a while. Yeah, and then turned around. Played around, around in those back. cuts and then came yeah. back up. And we said, we can't go past this. Yeah. It wasn't long after that something happened. I think, yeah, I think it was maybe like 10 or 15 minutes up the climb, and it was pretty steep. It was, it was steep. We got up, and I was like, oh, there's one right there. But it ended up being a, it was a cow and a calf. Yeah. yeah. And then before it was all said and done, we saw another cow and a calf up yep. there. And uh, Jason was able to get some good footage. But we went up over the first rise and down into a little bit of a valley and then up another rise. And when we got down into that second valley, I let out some cow calls and I heard a bull off in the distance grunt, but he must have been ready because it, it didn't take him long to get there. And uh, it was a beautiful bull. I'm sure most people would have shot him. I think he was 50 inches all easy, but he had decent palms, but his palms were a little bit narrower than I wanted and his fronts could have been a little better. So yeah, I definitely, I would have shot that bull on Saturday for sure. And the old saying is don't, you know, shoot anything on Saturday that you've passed up before, but he, it was a good shooter bull, but I was just hoping that we could get a better one.
Bussy, I think he was, he was probably close to 50, but he had kind of narrow palms, but he had nice fronts. He had three out on the front, I think, on both sides. He's still right there. Yeah. People on God's green earth that would pass that bull up. He was a beauty. What do you think, Jay? <laughs> <laughs> he has points going everywhere, huh? A beautiful, beautiful bull. said today's the day yep. I was like this <laughs> with the weather and everything I was like pretty like pretty had in my mind that like you know if we get if we get a shooter then we're gonna shoot him well you know how bad we've been struggling we saw five moose oh, but we yeah. only one bull but we saw yeah. five moose in about a All half right. hour so we were thinking yeah today's a better day uh, yeah and so this one walked out and Hal said Hal said they could put him away so <laughs> you did, right? I put I put one in his chest and yep. then he ran that and I think I back with I jacked around yeah. and yep. then I got so, so, so I was like that point back shot with I have one in the chest oh yeah because yeah, he was facing like, me and he doesn't look like and then he started the running and, and, and then I totally like the beaver. Well, we missed the, the second beaver. one yeah. But then, but, uh, then I got in that I like zone. Yeah, yeah. I so I racked the third one, and I yeah. like I picked the spot yeah. and just whoosh, yeah. and I hit him. I mean, I cut you right behind the the shoulder because he was running this way. Yeah, yeah. It crossed. Yeah, and, yeah. And yeah. Um, yeah. and, yeah. and this is the Barnes bullet. Oh, nice. And this is the only time I've ever had a Barnes not retain its mass. Yeah, yeah. So the pedals came off. Oh no shit. Oh, so, wow. so I've pulled barns out of pigs and, and, and they always had their pedals. I, but pull, I pulled them out of moose and I'd never seen him shed the pedals like that. Yeah, he so must have hit some serious bone. Can, yeah, and then all that was that. He didn't go far after that. No, I'm sure he didn't. He was sick. <laughs> so we ended up going down in a spot. My son had a moose on trail camera that was just gigantic. It was a smasher <laughs> from every angle. It looked good and no response and there was moose sign everywhere boy there was some big piss pits down yeah. there it looked like an excavator like yeah it looked like rock. an excavator did it yeah so but we ended up uh nothing didn't uh, it was a little bit windy but not bad i thought i would have got a response we worked our way back to the truck and you can't imagine how disappointing it was for me it was you could hunt till like quarter of that night <laughs> yeah and i heard i let out a cow call <laughs> And we heard this oh bull light a tree up. It was like he was smashing it with baseball bats. And I just looked at Chris and we're like, that's big. Yeah. I looked down at my watch and it was legal time. And I said, we got to get out of here. The footage won't be any good. It was legal time. I mean, if he'd been in the road, I could have shot him legally. But it was the last minute of legal time. And he was still in the woods. The footage wouldn't have been good. And I was afraid if I called him in, and it was a few minutes after. I wasn't going to shoot a moose. I'd waited 40 years for the permit. I wasn't going to shoot a moose after legal time. So I can remember it was so funny because Jason hasn't heard that stuff as much <laughs> as you and I. But yeah. he was like, I know he wanted to get that moose. Once he heard that, he wanted to get that moose That's in the camera. By the shirt. Get but in the truck. <laughs> we started, we weren't really running, but we were walking Both fast yeah. down the gravel road. And that was like a turn on for him, remember? Oh, yeah. remember once he heard us, us once he heard us running down the road to get away from him, he started chasing yeah. us. It's a good thing his rack was so big because I think it was holding him up. <laughs> and uh, when we got down to the brook, it was so thick. I heard him trying to come down through that brook yeah. and it was all Aldous. We literally, we jumped in my truck and drove away from the moose. Yeah. 
I laid in my sleeping bag all night and thought, oh. Well, you don't remember. We were on our hands and knees praying <laughs> to God something was going to hang him up. Huh? For a cow. Oh, we, yeah. yeah, we were praying for a cow. So the plan for tonight is my son was going to come down with us because my son got his client a really nice moose last night. I mean, a really nice one. But he's got down on this road, he's got a, a trail camera and he's got three pictures in like five nights of a really big bull. So if you point the camera over there, you can see the bridge is out. They yank the bridge. So you can only get through from the other end and there's no traffic really coming up in it. It's pretty tight with all this. If we end up seeing a moose down there, it'll probably be like the nice bull we saw this morning. It's gonna be up close and personal, but he'll be worth it. The winds come back up again, but hopefully it'll die down enough tonight so that I can hear him. And uh, it, he's a bull worth going for. Whether we can get it done, I don't know, but we'll see. So anyway, Chris just dragged me down through a keyhole down here, <laughs> friggin' waded a stream and everything, thinking we were going to be out here with nobody around, and we just ran into some guys that follow us on the podcast. We got Justin, Brett, and Adam. They're from Southern Maine, and uh, Justin shot a really nice bull earlier in the week, 50s. 54, Adam 54 shot it too. inches. 891 pounds. Yeah. Nice some mean eye guys, huh? Yep. Yeah. Triple eye guys. Nice, nice. So it's kind of nice to run into people that... Good people. Good offer people. Offer us food. We're yeah. out in the middle of nowhere. They asked us if we wanted hot dogs. <laughs> we would have taken one, but we just ate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's nice about Maine. You can be out in the middle of nowhere and run into some really yeah, cool good people. people. So yeah, that's appreciate right. appreciate the conversation I, I tell lot. you a funny story. It happened the second day we were here scouting. You said you didn't expect to see anybody come down there. I ended up... I followed a moose trail up over a mountain and came out through the woods on a road. I mean, I knew where I was, but there were some guys parking there and they're like, because there's no other roads around, they're like, where did you come from? And I said, well, I just hiked up over the mountain. There. He said, you hiked up over the mountain for what? And I said, look at the moose sign. <laughs> Tomorrow night we should come back here because that's sick. Do 
Did you hear his horns? Oh. That, it had a lot of bone. Oh, you hear that hollowness? I heard him. Oh. Trust me, I heard him. I'm just so glad that Stephen, my son, yeah. was able to come with us. Uh, I think you sent him a text on yeah. the inReach and said, hey, your dad wants you here at early yeah. in the morning. We drove down in the dark and we just listened for like a half an hour. And uh, then when it was daylight, I loaded the gun up. We walked down that same road, which you couldn't drive down the road. The bridge was out. There was a bridge missing. And we walked down the road. And I think it was probably, might have been a half a mile, no longer than that. Maybe a half a mile from where we heard him the night before. I peeked around a corner and I just saw that one gigantic antler out in the road. And uh, should we should we let him suspend till the rest of it, or do you want to tell him the whole thing? Well, I don't know. How how do you want to handle this? I think we should let him let him watch it. Yeah, we'll it's let pretty, him. It's pretty evident. Jason did a great job getting that bull. And yeah, again, on we'll, video. we'll let him see what happened. Yeah. They thought I hesitated too long, but I want to make I want to make sure Jason got <laughs> good footage. We had a conversation. Me and Jason like, oh, is this guy not so hot? <laughs> Once I saw he had those good fronts, I knew I was going to take him. Oh yeah. with me my best friends with me got a great camera guy we worked hard this week didn't we we worked hard i rocked him both times he took it hard he was 35 wailing he was 35 Oh, he's got, he's beautiful, man. Look at the points on him. Shit, <laughs> are you happy? 40 years. <laughs> yeah. Dude, you dumped him. He didn't go nowhere. <laughs> Where's Steven? Oh, he's coming. <laughs> he ain't getting up. Is it him? Is it him? He's, he's got the front. He's down. He's right there. Steven, do you think anything different? The old man shooting? <laughs> I called him away from a car. We came around here and I said, I can't believe it. Yeah, I want to see it. I go, <laughs> We're going to be able to drive around and get him. I know. I'll be like, I'll, uh... Oh, that's a beauty, Dad. <laughs> that's a beauty. Oh, that's him right there. Yeah. You think so? Oh, that's hot. Give me a minute. I'll look. Wow, look at the front side. Look at the front side. 
Oh, you fancy beautiful. Oh, Man, I don't even think that's him though. I think he's got four on both of yeah. his fronts. Oh, he's got the extra that's front. perfect, that. That's a beauty. Oh, <laughs> I mean, no, that's, that's, it right here. <laughs> that's a beauty. Yeah. I, Dad, look at that freaking ball. <laughs> Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four. That'll be twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight. Twenty-eight. Oh, oh, <laughs> oh my God. We knew this was going to be the morning. Oh, we knew God. it, dude. It was quiet. It was cold. Oh, I heard him go down. Because I'm trying to think in the camera. He had a four-point <laughs> front. But I thought it was his right side he had four points. Those but I'm savage. telling you what, that's, that's, nice that's, yeah. that's as good a bull as that one was. He was questioning that thing, too. I know. <laughs> well, you thought I was being too fussy <laughs> again, Jay? <laughs> he says, I said, you're going to shoot him, aren't you? great morning it couldn't have been any better we've talked earlier Monday Tuesday and Wednesday were just brutal the wind blew non-stop I couldn't communicate with any bulls and it was just it was tough but I've been there before one thing about guiding if you do it for 20 years like I have you've been through that kind of stuff so we didn't get discouraged yesterday Thursday was the first decent day we had and uh, we saw five moose yesterday passed on a, a really nice bull yesterday morning. He was probably 50 inches, but he didn't have palms like this, and he just, you know, we decided to pass on him. In the past, when we've hunted bulls that we had on trail cram, you almost never get them. You know, you end up shooting other bulls, but uh, the pictures that he had was a smasher like this. I mean, this is a beast. It's got four on his fronts. They usually have to have some age on them to get those nice fronts like that, and uh, he's 54 inches, got 29 points, just a beautiful bull. I think we heard this bull last night. Like I said, after Stephen told us about this spot, we came down yesterday afternoon, and it was pretty calm. It was a little breezy when we first got here, but then it calmed down. It's really surprising. We haven't heard a cow ball all week, and we didn't hear any this morning. I just, I cow called really low because there's no wind, and I sound a lot better. Every guy does. When you're in the wind, you just have to bellow and you just sound a little distorted, but because it was so calm, I could just whine and moan and sound better. And We came around a corner and this bull, I immediately I saw him, but I didn't see all of them. I just saw a palm sticking out. So I told them and we scooted down. Jason got in position. Chris was in position behind me. And when I first looked at him, I could only see one palm. And his head was laid back. He was trying to smell me, I think. The first time I saw him, he was licking his lips and then licking his nose. Then he had his palms laid back, so I got my binoculars out. 
because I, I wanted to make sure it was a bull I wasn't going to be disappointed in. As soon as I saw the fronts, they don't get those nice fronts like that until they get some age on them and they got to have the genetics too, but that's when I made up my mind uh, to shoot him. I looked back at Jason, asked him if he had him, he said he did. The 35 Whalen barked and I knew I'd hit him hard. I, I wished he was almost facing me straight on. He was quartering just a little bit, so I put it in front of his shoulder there. And I'd already made up my mind as soon as I fired, I was going to put another one in because with these big animals, you just you want to get them as close to the road as you can. So I'm so grateful that Jason could film it. I'm sure it's going to come out great. Chris and I have been talking about doing this hunt for 10 years. Mm -hmm. It took me 40 years to draw a moose permit. I was a 14-year-old kid the first time I applied in 1980, and now I'm a 54-year-old grandfather of four. <laughs> so I've been a long time waiting, and I'm so grateful, too, that Stephen could be with me. Uh, it's just, it's a wonderful thing. I'm really proud of my kid. He got a smasher of a bull on Wednesday in really tough conditions. I'm glad he could be here with us. And uh, I just, it's a great hunt. <laughs> Thank you for sharing it with me, buddy. I appreciate it very much. Well, I don't think I'd want to be any other place in the world right now than to be able to share the camaraderie and just, I love being up in these woods. Yeah. They're home for me. Huh? That's yeah, great. Yeah. We got two unbelievable bulls. Uh, my friend Brian Donaghy, it's kind of funny, Brian and I have been friends for years and uh, he got a permit for zone one and Brian got a smasher yesterday. He got a beautiful bull and uh, we were drawn almost side by side. His name was drawn and then there was one other person and then I was drawn. So we were drawn almost back to back. We. Uh, texted the nice thing about the in reach is uh, Chris he texted my wife so my wife is six hours away from here but she knows I got a big bull this morning Chris texted her and she knows I got a nice bull and she's happy for me I texted mama as well yeah good Stephen did uh, another thing I I will say I'm I'm the guy in the group that's known even though I'm goodly not badly I'm also <laughs> I'm known as the, I'm the old archaic guy. I do everything old fashioned. I've got a Garmin, you know, the first edition Garmin GPS that ever came out. I've had it for I don't know how long. I'm old school in everything that I do, but eventually I'll have to break down. Chris has been using the Onyx ever since we got in here. And the thing that's nice about that is we checked this morning after we shot this bull. Chris checked and that, that spruce bog that we called in to yesterday runs all the way up in here and then you can see there's some skid trails and stuff that go down to it so with that onyx you can check like I said and we know that spruce bog is right there there's plenty of water down there there's skid trails and then on the other side of it there's some older cuts but there's some feed and these moose have got long legs they can travel faster than we can so I mean a mile to them is nothing and he had everything here he needed oh one thing I forgot to say was I actually called him away from a cow this morning I must have been sounding sexy this morning. I must have been sounding good. <laughs> yeah, I think we should. Sorry, I got a little emotionally on there, but uh, I love my kid. I love all my kids. I got three great daughters, too. And uh, they all called their daddy before I left, the day before I left, and wished me good luck and said they'd pray for me. So I'm sure that helped, too. Life's good. Let me uh, make that full size. That's cool. That's definitely I like, him. I thought I said, I was like, man, there's no way there's two moose like that. Thank you.
the last day. All the hard work's done. People are getting ready to head out of camp, so I'm cooking a big breakfast. We got our bacon, we got our scrambled eggs, we got our hash browns, we got coffee over on the wood stove heating up. Everybody got a nice bowl. Life is good. Got myself camp camp help now. I was gonna say something else, but I don't like that. <laughs> full full time night woman. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody gets a kick out of my quote in Jeremiah Johnson. Chris was my full time night woman oh, this yeah. week. <laughs> we shared a tent because we don't snore that bad. I felt bad for poor Billy, the uh, the vet that we had up here. The first night, Joel slept in there, and he smells like a bear. So he ended up, he came in here and slept on the cook tent floor the first night. And then after Joel left, Hal showed up, and Hal ain't much better. So he spent the night in his truck that first night there. So, Billy, we want to apologize for not letting you sleep with Chris and I, but we had that all worked out before you got here. We had the executive <laughs> suite. Looking back at it now, once you know the hunt's over and everything, and we've talked about all the stuff leading up to it and how much fun it was, I uh, I've got fond memories of it. I always will have, and uh, like I said, I I knew I was going to be fussy. I wasn't going to shoot something unless it was a really good one, and I knew that too. <laughs> I just I thought to myself, I want this to be something that I'm never going to have any regrets. So, and after we shot the moose. And uh, Stephen was like right behind us, and he came up and said, Dad, I think that's the moose that I had on trail camera from like 10 days before. We hadn't seen it since, but he thought he had it on trail camera from 10 days before. I remember telling Stephen when I saw it, I thought, I think that's a booner. I said, I, I think that thing's got 185 inches. And so, and I've taken some booners before and, and Mastic and Pope and Young throughout the years we've been able to take some really nice nice trophies and uh, so when Stephen came up he checked it and sure enough we we were pretty convinced it was the bull that he had from 10 days he before had a out, remember? <laughs> and uh, Stephen he said to me he said dad he said I, don't you think that thing you know it's going to be big enough for Boone and Crockett and I was like well it takes a really big one yeah. a really big one I was pretty convinced, and then Hal came and scored him, and uh, I I sent all the paperwork into Mastic, and uh, he was scored big enough. They got to be 185 for Boone and Crockett, and he was 185 and seven eighths. Mm. And I thought, well, he'll be one of the best ones shot last year. But last week, Mastic sent me my little certificate. The 40-year wait was worth it. My bull, my bull was the largest bull taken in yeah. 2020. That's awesome. So yeah, that's. That's pretty cool. Yeah, awesome. Yeah. Hey, so thanks for including me. I think it's a, a gift, and I appreciate it very much. I was, I I was glad you could be there. Yeah. It I'll was never great. Never forget it. Never, ever. Yeah. Yeah. It was I, great. I wouldn't want to share that with too many more people, but I like it. It was a good time. You know, I don't think we could ask for a better hunt. No, we couldn't. It was Even special. Shot, we shot some partridge. I had to make the guy stop shooting birds. We had too many. We couldn't keep up with them. <laughs> we were eating partridge all week. <laughs> partridge with your eggs, partridge sandwiches, partridge yeah. with the beans at night. I'm not complaining, though. It was fun. No. That's good.